If you're listening to someone on social media who confuses you by unloading their own personal industry challenges and disappointments, I would honestly question that person's qualifications to lead anybody. Something that I apparently need to open the eyes of my viewers about is that from this day forward, please be very careful about who you are taking life advice and career advice from on social media. One of the most dangerous things we've been witnessing is that because the barrier of entry is so low on YouTube or coding forums, I mean literally anyone can start a YouTube channel or open a coding forum. Well, because of that, there are tons of people out there who are highly confused and discouraged about exploding their careers. YouTubers are spewing out so much negativity that it's actually paralyzing the decision making of way too many viewers. Just because someone is a medical coder, that doesn't mean that they're now qualified to hand out career advice, much less life advice. Before you take life advice or career advice from someone seen on YouTube or even a coding forum, please ask yourself what exactly qualifies them to hand out this advice to anyone? Being a medical coder simply isn't enough. I mean, for all you know, you could be listening to a low-performing medical coder. So please open your eyes. I'm getting into this right now because all of a sudden, there's just been this influx of people in our email who are confused, unsure, and on the fence about pursuing medical coding. And every time we ask why all the confusion, the first thing they do is mention a video they saw. Videos like, is medical coding right for me? Is medical coding worth it? <sighs> Goodness gracious. Okay, the very fact that a YouTuber even titled a video this way tells me they're not exactly rooting for you to join the rest of us, or perhaps they just wanted you to click their video. Who knows? But as for the people who clicked into these videos, absolutely, some of the viewers were seeking honest career guidance. But the tragedy is that others were just hoping to find more excuses to not do the work that it takes to better their lives, their futures. And this is where I come unglued because instead of the YouTuber taking the opportunity to empower these people and turn it around for them, instead, they enable them. So the YouTuber advances in their life, but their viewers remain stagnant. Awful. When asked about all the confusion, other people expressed nothing about watching a certain channel on YouTube, but instead said they were feeling unsure because of all the negativity on a certain medical coding forum. All right, so in order to help guide everyone, the first thing you all need to know is that you're on the wrong YouTube channel and you're on the wrong coding forum. But other than stating the obvious, I'm going to do my very best to help you with this video. Here, you know what? One of the best ways to iron all this out is to simply paint an image in your minds. Here we introduce Decisive and Determined Dave and Indecisive and Play It Safe Susie. Decisive and Determined Dave works as a forklift operator at the Walmart warehouse. He recently lost his wife, Sandy. Tragically, Sandy passed away while giving birth to their baby boy. Dave began looking at alternate careers the moment he became a single parent. He did a Google search on certificate jobs that pay well without a four-year degree. After studying the statistics seen on the slide, he placed his two most appealing choices side by side and made a list of all the pros and cons. Dave considered and studied both lists very carefully. Because healthcare is such a recession-proof industry that offers flexible work-from-home hours, decisive and determined Dave chose to pursue an education in medical coding. Next, Dave went on a mission to find the most affordable yet highly ranked medical coding program the industry had to offer. 
After about four hours of intense research, Dave found that no other school could beat MCA's tuition cost, and no other school even came close to having the raving reviews that Medical Coding Academy did. MCA was the obvious choice. He registered for the course, got instant access to all the online training videos, and received all his learning materials shipped to him within three days of registering. Dave completed Medical Coding Academy's online medical coding course, passed his certification test on his first try, and landed a coding job at a healthcare company. This job was not a remote job, but Dave took the job anyway because they offered him $27 an hour, great benefits, and the daycare was only one minute away from his workplace. Four months later, the pandemic came on the scene and all the medical billers and coders were asked to work remotely from home. As a matter of fact, the latest company memo he's gotten from the company was that all coders and billers would work from home infinitely, as the space they had previously been using has opened up more patient exam rooms, and the clinic has been able to see twice the number of patients. <coughs> This was incredible news because twice the number of patients meant tons of overtime opportunity pay for all the billers and coders. Dave is on cloud nine, ecstatic, and can't believe all the money he's been able to save. Not only did Dave gain twice the amount of income, but he was also able to realize his dream of working from home. So, you tell me. What exactly did Dave gain by being a decisive and determined person? Dave gained a lucrative career making more money with tons of overtime opportunities and the ability to work from home. Dave is a perfect example of a high achiever because determined and successful people are decisive people. Then we have play it safe, indecisive Susie. Susie works a nine to five job as a receptionist for a catering company. Susie earns $14 an hour. She's been worried about her financial future for a few years now. She feels she needs a career and not just a job. For the past six months, she's been binging on medical coding YouTube videos and researching medical coding schools. However, with more and more research, she's only become more and more frustrated and further away from actually making a decision. One channel gets her ready to move forward, but the other channel makes her panic and suddenly she's very afraid of making a mistake. Susie has always taken much pride in being a very cautious person. She's never been one to take any plunges or make any risky moves. The way she sees it is, well, if I'm this confused about making a move, I guess I'll be better off playing it safe and staying put here at my current job for a while. Four months later, the pandemic came on the scene and Susie was the first person to be laid off. So, you tell me, what exactly did Susie gain in being indecisive. Susie gained, well, nothing. Susie is a perfect example of a high procrastinator because play it safe and unsuccessful people are indecisive people. As you can see, playing it safe wasn't so safe after all. I want to emphasize that the only thing Susie gained by overanalyzing, overthinking, over-researching, following channels that don't empower or equip her, and not taking immediate action was confusion and frustration. Listen up everyone, when this is your mental state, all perspective gets lost, your decision making gets crippled and your dreams and goals get compromised. I also want to emphasize that Susie stated she was afraid of making a mistake and didn't believe in taking any risks. I want to ask you, 
In the past five years, past ten years, how many risks have you taken? And in those five or ten years of not taking any risks, have things gotten any better? Think about that. So now that the images are painted, here's what I highly recommend you ponder. Who cares if medical coding is right for you? What does it matter if there's a tiny bit of math, your coworker or your boss might be mean, you might end up with a quota, code uh. updates come out yearly, the guidelines often change, you'll have to work to find a job. Are you serious? That's not the point. If you're a Susie, if that's you, then you, my dear, you are missing the whole point. The point is, will becoming a certified medical coder and working as a medical coder better your life and that of your loved ones? Yes, right? Listen to me because this is important. What you do right now will control your outcome one year from now. On the same token, what you do not do right now will also control your outcome one year from now. One year from now, what you will not be able to change is your destination overnight. You need to understand that one year from now or even five years from now, if you decide to be stagnant for even a greater period of time, whether you like it or not, you are going to arrive somewhere. The question is, where will that be exactly? Will that be a place of self-trust, self-respect, self-confidence, or a place of insecurity, regret, and failure? One year from now, will you be wearing what you want, driving what you want, living where you want? I'm going to say something right now and please know that this is coming from a place of love and wanting the very best for you. But the reality is, all of those things that you want, yeah, they don't cost too much. No. A reality is, the real issue is with your income right now. That's the real problem because it's placing you in a position where you can't afford them. And by the way, I'm not right now just referring to the average income of a medical coder. I am referring to the incredible ways to multiply and maximize your income once you make it as a medical coder. So stay tuned for that upcoming video. Now listen, I know that was hard to take, but my goodness, it's pretty clear that way too many people need a wake-up call. The only reason a person gives up on something life-changing is because they lack a real hunger and determination. Too many people would like a career, but they're not determined enough to get them. All the excuses you come up with only ever point back to one thing, a lack of determination. And as long as you're undetermined, you're gonna be indecisive. And with indecision, you're gonna be right where you are. And apparently, from all the reports we've been getting, no YouTuber is willing to sound the alarm on that. Well, I am because confused people are also completely missing the fact that that medical coding completely obliterates the whole belief that in order to make great income, you must have a college degree. Coders often make twice that of a person who holds a degree earns, you know, depending on what degree that person attained or what the major was that they chose. So here you are being offered a chance to learn a robust set of skills 
earning a well-respected credential in the industry that will swing the doors wide open for you in less than three months without an application, without any prerequisites, without any degrees, all of this in an industry where the income growth and income potential is through the roof and you're stuck on, I'm not sure if medical coding is right for me. I'm not sure if medical coding is worth it. Okay, hello. 200 million people in America have less than $1,000 in their savings account right now. Once again, I hope you can see who cares if medical coding is right for you. Because having less than a thousand dollars, that's not even enough for a family emergency. The only thing we should all be is in a huge hurry to be capitalizing on such an incredible opportunity. Now, fixing all of this is going to be contingent upon something excruciatingly important. In order to get above average income, you have to be willing to become an above average person. Look around and know that the reason you can have more than what you've got now is because you can become more than what you are through personal development. As a matter of fact, unless you personally develop or grow, you'll always be where you are right now. You see, in my experience as the founder of one of the most successful medical coding schools in the nation, I've found that a person's income rarely exceeds the person's personal development. What I'm saying here is that it's going to take personal growth to increase your income. Picture this, you're standing at a crossroad. You can either take the road of personal growth in order to achieve your goals and dreams, or you can take the other road where you don't need to worry at all about personal growth. You know, so long as you're willing to denounce your goals and dreams. Sure, a person can sometimes get lucky and experience a pay raise or a jump in revenue, but without the personal growth it takes to catch up to where their income is, that income usually comes back down to where the person first was. I say this because a study once confirmed that if we took all the money in the world, from every wealthy person all the way to every poor person, and we divided it up evenly amongst everyone, don't you know that the money would make its way back to the same wealthy people who had experienced the personal growth to earn it in the first place? The reason for this is because success is not something a person pursues, but instead attracts. This is to teach you that it is imperative that you have dreams and goals. I'm very passionate about this because without them, you stay right where you are. And by the way, stay tuned for an upcoming video on that. Before you take advice from anyone, just ask yourself, have the people you're taking advice from, have they written any instrumental medical coding programs that have actually impacted people's futures? Have they written any vital books that have actually improved people's lives? Have they ever developed any industry leading products? Do they push you to grow personally? In other words, do they invest the time to personally empower their viewers? Do they equip their viewers professionally with actual sound knowledge that the viewers can then turn around and make informed decisions about? Another big thing you might ask yourself is, does this person own their own business? This is epic because if they do, there is a much higher probability that this is a person who's actually already achieved their dreams and are now looking to help others also achieve. It's important to investigate whether this has been the case and not because of the achiever's income, but because of the leadership qualities 
that were developed inside of that person during their pursuit of achieving their goals and dreams. These leadership qualities are the only qualities that actually qualify a person to lead others. Qualities like raising the bar in an industry. Is the person you're taking advice from constantly setting higher standards? Are they frequently implementing highly strategic developments for the industry to take advantage of? Has this person publicly established an unyielding courage to disrupt an industry in order to bring truth and keep your best interest in the forefront? Does the person you're listening to demonstrate irrefutable initiative, relentless commitment, vital critical thinking skills, and my gosh, the biggest of all is does this person have a compelling trustworthiness? A trust that can only ever be earned by watching this person continuously set goals and actually conquer every one of them. These, my dear ones, are the true leaders of the industry. Don't be a follower of someone who hasn't yet demonstrated, but rather be a student of someone who has actually already achieved and because of that has the genuine drive and fire to push you to achieve personally and professionally. So I maintain, is the person you are taking life and career advice from improving the industry by constantly mentoring and developing others? Because if they are not, they are not yet a true leader. Anyone who hasn't yet fulfilled their dreams is either working towards personal development, has no idea the power of personal growth, or has abandoned all notions of personal growth. Just as scary is the YouTuber you're listening to being sponsored by organizations and companies that are providing payments to them for their endorsements. Because if they are, your best interest is not their priority. Has the YouTuber you've been listening to all of a sudden switched from never recommending a medical coding school to now all of a sudden pointing to a very specific one? If this is the case, it's because they've just landed a contract with a school that is paying them a certain percentage. I know of some right now who are getting paid per head by online schools for every person this YouTuber influences to sign up with their online program. I actually know of this because I was approached to do the very same thing by the very same online school I now see being endorsed by a YouTuber. I said no because in doing so, I wouldn't have the student's best interest at heart anymore. But this other YouTuber said yes. And yet this is someone handing out advice and telling you which exact online school to suddenly pick. I rest my case. This is why, by the way, you all need to be very careful with teachers who are affiliated with specific coding organizations. Of course these teachers are going to do everything they can to endorse the organization that they're affiliated with. Even when the students of that online school are constantly expressing how lost they are or constantly expressing frustration literally all over wide open coding forums. Some of them are notorious for never addressing any of the tough topics. Why is that? It's because there's only so much they can say given the fact that they have affiliations with certain organizations or they're being sponsored by certain organizations. And because of this lack of transparency, the viewers are constantly walking away doubtful about this industry or fearful about it. 
We've also been made aware of another YouTuber who actually tells their viewers not to go to any schools that are any less than 9 to 18 months long. Are you kidding me? Okay, let's just take a look at that for a second. Sue, seen on the left side here, attended a 12-month school took a loan out for the amount of $15,000 to cover her tuition. A tuition that she's now in debt for. But it's all okay because she's now a medical coder over at Prime Diagnostics. Joe, seen over on the right side, he did the medical coding course with Medical Coding Academy. He slapped the whole amount of $13.99 on a credit card and had $0 debt to pay back. But it's all okay because he's now a medical coder at UT Southwestern. Wait, what? Okay, so now you're seeing exactly who you are taking advice from. How does this YouTuber have your best interest when they clearly don't care about your money? And yet another example? is the YouTuber you're listening to asking you to purchase other companies' products by using their links. Okay, just so we're clear, that YouTuber doesn't necessarily endorse the products because they're the best in the market, but rather they're endorsing them because they're getting kickbacks from all of your purchases. Wake up, everybody. And yet others of you who haven't exactly been tainted by other channels or coding forums, your issue is an inability to choose between a college career or a certification career. This group of people have an extremely hard time deciding because they don't like not knowing how things are going to turn out for them with one path or the other. All right, for this we paint you another picture. Meet Michael. Let's say Michael chooses college. $80,000 later, he lands a job making a living as an engineer. He earns $120,000 a year. Michael works hard his whole life and passes away of a stroke at age 52. The point is, nobody knows in advance how things are gonna turn out. Meet Rose. Let's say Rose decides to forego college and she gets a credential for medical coding. She works from home and loves every bit of it. One day, in her second year of working from home, she went out to the backyard to take her dog to use the restroom. Rose accidentally slips on the pool deck and dies instantly from head trauma. The point is, Nobody knows in advance how things are gonna turn out. Oh, and Susie, let's not forget Play It Safe Indecisive Susie from earlier. Remember, she was a prime example of someone who had plenty of excuses not to act. She sat around waiting for the perfect time. But guess what? She missed the perfect time because the perfect time was prior to the pandemic. There were no benefits to Susie not taking the leap. So for all the Susies out there, if this is you, please start turning a deaf ear to any negative talk. Instead of listening to a podcast from a comedian, try the ones from Zig Ziglar, Les Brown, Tony Robbins. You know, wisdom comes by what you're hearing. So be careful to what and who you are listening to. You say, well, yeah, but what if I don't find a job? Okay. Just to be fair, that's the case in every industry. If you can't find a job right away, keep working until you do. There are people with college degrees in accounting right now with massive debt who can't find a job. Besides, I mean, think about it. Other people are drowning in huge school debt. You, however, your investment was only $13.99. Talk about a no-brainer. You say, but... What if this isn't where God wants me? Okay, now you're really going to get me going. <laughs> Look, if this all works out, which I bet it does, then great. 
But if it doesn't, abort, redirect, and adjust. If this doesn't end up being the path God wanted you to be on, don't worry. God will find you, and at that, He'll have you use the experience you gained from this career and direct you to the path that He wants you. <laughs> Besides, God placing coding on your heart was not an accident. God makes no mistakes. Remember, He's been nudging you toward it because your career is here, or because this is a necessary step. In order to get you where he wants you, listen. Once God puts an idea in your heart, move. You need to believe that it's God who's opening this door for you, once and for all. I recorded this video to help bring you the level of awareness that you need in order to stop doing what you've always done and stop ending up at the same place this year. That you were at last year. All of this to say, decide to do it, or decide not to. But for goodness' sake, don't stay confused. Pick one. And by the way, you might want to pick the one that will give you the highest probability of solving your problems. But yes, move forward on it and flood yourself with massive certainty. About your decision, the only thing you need to know is how to outsmart the other applicants and how to get hired at the interview without experience. I'll go ahead and close, but just know, at the end of the day, I'd rather execute on something with massive certainty and tons of action, and see where it takes me, than to have a lingering. Uncertainty, never take action, and end up right where I'm at now. I'd rather aim too high and make it immediately or even eventually than to aim too low and live with regrets. If you ever take the time to visit a rest home, they'll all tell you the same thing, honey. At the end of your life, you're not gonna cry about your losses. You're gonna cry about your regrets. I can tell you right now, God above, the only, and I mean the only, regrets our students have ever had is not coming to us sooner. Again, steer clear from anyone who subtracts from you, and stick with the ones who add to you. Stick with the ones who have proven over and over again that they have an above-average, genuine interest in truly helping people. Okay, well, that's it for now. See you all next time. God bless you all.